uh, distinguished chair, moderator, fellow present pre presenters. It's an honor to participate um, in this international conference. Um, I'm excited about learning uh, from everybody and uh, sharing with you over the next few days. Um, although after being almost last on the panel, it seems like I probably have nothing new to say, I can only hope I can say it differently. Um, as per the introduction, you'll know that I am the head of mission for International um, Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance in, in Nepal. But what you may not know is that I'm a Canadian. And I would like to open my presentation by looking at a Canadian example that I believe demonstrates the importance of informal voter education. Um, so in 2004, the Premier of, Ontar of Canada's province of Ontario announced that a citizen's uh, assembly would be established to look at the first past the post electoral system and recommend possible um, changes. The proposed changes were to be voted upon at the next election, three years down the road, um, concurrent with and in a referendum. The Citizens' Assembly was composed of 103 regular citizens. A lot of time was put into identifying one person from every constituency in the province of Ontario to sit on this constituent assembly. The assembly was 50% men and 50% women. A lot of a lot of work went into finding the right people, and they were regular citizens. They spent seven months learning about electoral systems, all the different ones, deliberating um, as to which one might fit best for the province of Ontario. They had some public consultations, and at the end of that six months, they recommended a mixed first-past-the-post and public uh, PR system, which is actually it was of great interest to me at the time. I was in Nepal, and Nepal was looking at a very, very similar model, which they've since adopted. The proposal for a new electoral system was defeated in the referendum um, by a, an overwhelming majority, it was 63% um, against a change. So what's interesting about this story is not the story in and of itself, it's just why did it, was it defeated? Um, it was a proposal developed by a group of ordinary citizens, well selected, carefully selected, but it was defeated by a majority of voters. The analysis by some Canadian experts um, was that it failed due to a lack of understanding of the proposed new system by the voters. So while the government of Ontario actually implemented and launched a educational campaign, they only launched it three months before the election, and it did not inform the public well about the substance of the proposal or the competing um, arguments in favour or against it. So as a result, at the time of the voting, the polls show that the public understanding of the referendum question remained very low, with 47% of respondents saying they knew um, nothing at all about the new system. 41% said they knew a little, and only 12% um, thought they knew a lot. Um, in this example, a lack of understanding by a majority of the public translated into a lack of confidence to vote for change. And many of us in this room and at the front of this table right now are in periods of change. We're not established democracies. Um, I'm going to say that as, not as a Canadian, but as a, a person who works in Nepal. Um, we are in transition. And it is hard to get people to move in transition, transition if they don't uh, understand what they're uh, moving towards. So. Um, it's not enough, the lesson here is it's not enough for the government or a select group of experts, even if that group of experts are ordinary citizens, to understand the transition plan. Rather, a democracy requires citizens to understand and take ownership to effect change. And the lesson here is clearly, and this is how I want to start my presentation, is voter education matters. And I think we've all said that, or we wouldn't have put so much time into developing the programs that we've heard about from the other panelists before me. Um, and as you may know, and I'll just uh, looking at Karen here, that um, our Prime Minister in Canada has um, identified uh, looking at reforming our electoral system as a priority of his government. And I would just hope that if we go down that road and we are looking at reform, that um, Elections Canada and, and other actors in Canada will look at a very robust uh, educational uh, program, voter education program related to it. Um, also, um, I would like to now travel from Canada to Nepal, which is a country I have had the privilege to live and work in for almost the last 10 years. And it's a country in which I've been involved in voter education at the so-called grassroots level since 2007. 
Um, and as you'll see as we go through my slides when I talk about Nepal, is the electoral system that Nepal has adopted is an important part of voter education in Nepal. They were first past the post um, prior to the 2008 election. Um, there's been slight changes in, um, to that, that um, mixed uh, uh, first past the post and PR system um, over the years. Uh, no one please put the, the timer on. The timer has not been put on. Oh good, I get more time. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. All right, I'll move on. Um, so I just I have a diagram here. It is a very super unofficial diagram of voter education channels in Nepal. I'm sure the ECN, um, by which I mean the Election Commission of Nepal, not Namibia. Um, I wouldn't endorse, but it's a very simplistic diagram to show, of course, as we all know, there's the formal channel, there's the informal channel. Um, and as this session is fo focused on the informal, um, I'm on the right-hand side of the diagram. and international idea in Nepal works mostly, a little bit in the, the two blue boxes, but mostly in the brown boxes, training and interactive um, programs. Uh, we work with the International Election, uh, the, sorry, the Election Commission of Nepal to deliver voter education through trainings, and we work with other organizations to hold interactive programs. We're, um, uh, so we're starting with training. Um, the Election Commission of Nepal adopted uh, Building Resources in Democracy, Governance and Elections, or Bridge Module Trainings in 2008. Uh, and International IDEA was right there with them, along with uh, our other partners, IFAS and the UNDP um, ESP program. The ECN and its partners um, conducted research on global best practices for voter education to identify which of the total 24 bridge modules were most applicable in the context of Nepal. And ultimately, um, the ECN chose 11 bridge modules um, to customize. Since 2008, the ECN's development and delivery of bridge modules have been continually supported by, inter, uh, by its partners and updated. Seven of the 11 modules focus on election implementation and hence more on the, um, the government actors in the process. Five of the 11 are more focused on election participation. And so if you're doing the math, and I'm, I'm well aware that seven plus five is, not, is uh, more than 11, it's because, as I mentioned before, electoral systems are down, double counted here. This is a really important thing in Nepal that everybody understands electoral systems. I just want to give one short example that I think probably the Election Commission runs into, and I run into it all the time. Um, there is a belief among many people, even um, I think some members of parliament, not just the voters, that the first past the post um, members are elected and the proportional representation members are not elected. Um, and so that makes we have it, they, they view them as being two tier. So that's the kind of thing that voter education is intended to do, is to uh, dispel those um, in inaccuracies, which can also affect the quality of your democracy because it undermines a certain um, number of the members of parliament. Um, bridge training audiences include, of course, the ECN um, government and staff to enhance the capacity of electoral management. Um, the trainings are for key electoral um, stakeholders. We've, everyone sort of mentioned these. Media, political parties, observer groups, civil society organizations, and these are to encourage greater participation and involvement. There's training for security sector agencies. In Nepal, it's the Nepal Police, the Armed Police, the National Intelligence Bureau, and, and the Army. And that's to help prepare for the safe and secure um, elections. Uh, focus training for disadvantaged groups. Um, in, in Nepal, we specifically focus on women, Dalit, Medeshi, Muslim, indigenous peoples. And this is to promote inclusion and increase the voice of these historically marginalized populations. And finally, special trainings are held for differently able persons. And we've had a lot of examples here. And um, we, we do a lot of the same stuff in, in Nepal. Um, but with respect to uh, our bridge module, for um, we w we've adapted many of them for non-auditory comprehension. So we've taken them and actually made them uh, very specific to uh, deaf citizens. I don't know if you're aware, but in, in Nepal, there's an extraordinarily high number of um, deaf persons. Um, so that's uh, why there's a, a special focus on that. Um, so in addition to supporting the Election Commission of Nepal to build capacity um, of government actors and citizens, International IDEA conducts interactive programs through what we call the Civic Initiative Centers um, to deliver informal voter education to people at the district and uh, village levels. Um, these CICs are managed in collaboration with Nepal's uh, Legislature Parliament Secretariat and implemented through a national NGO. 
There are 14 centers across the country, all of which were established in 2010 and continue to operate today. They're located, um, DePaul now has on paper at least seven new provinces, and these 14 centers are distributed across the seven provinces. Not exactly equally, we have actually more um, in the south of Nepal where they're, they're actually it's more necessary because um, there's more um, concern over the, con the contents of the constitution there. We have, through those um, civic initiative centers, delivered programs to in all 75 districts in Nepal, and um, a thousand of, uh, I think it's approximately 3,000 uh, village uh, uh, levels. The objectives of these civic initiative centers are to increase understanding of constitutional provisions, including those related to elections, the electoral system, civil and political rights, um, and to support civic education at the local level on various topics, including voter and election related manners, matters. Target audiences, um, there's multiple target audiences and I think many of us have talked about that today. But at the, both levels, the district and the village, um, we target political parties, civil society and representatives from marginalized groups. At the district level, um, professional associations, academics, journalists and government offices are targeted. Um, when we go down to the village level, we're getting more um, into individuals and teachers and students. Um, so that's more of the focus there. The role of the civic initiative centers is first, to inform people at the local level on their right to vote and the importance of voting, the electoral system again, proposed constitutional provisions related to elections in the electoral system, and the basic features of the provisions of the Constitution of Nepal 2015 related to elections and the electoral system. Their second role was in 2015, prior to promulgation of the Constitution, to uh, prepare the people to participate in the official public opinion uh, um, collection on the draft uh, Constitution. And it currently is to prepare citizens at the local level to comment on proposed um, elect electoral legislation, uh, regulations, policies, and practices. Um, in addition to conducting interactive workshops, the Civic Initiative Centers um, also hold activities on uh, to, to increase voter awareness. Uh, we do national TV and local um, FM radio broadcasts. Um, so that is some audio and visual, but it's not uh, our major focus. Um, and we do, we do, do distribute uh, printed resource materials that definitely when we're trying to prepare voters uh, to participate in dialogues, we provide um, resource materials. I want to make a comment about language here because it's been brought up. And in Nepal, there's a, there's a huge difficulty and there's 125 or so uh, languages and dialects. And um, well, it would be great for us to be able to do our materials in all those languages. Of course, that's almost prohibitive um, logistically and, and, and uh, cost-wise. And the problem we've had in some of our projects, too, is that if you select a certain number of, of languages, then you invite criticism from those languages you don't select. So it's, it's a very, very difficult um, issue. Um, do you do it in more than one language, um, Nepali plus other languages? If you choose other languages, which languages? It's, it's just, it's, it's, uh, the Election Commission, I'm sure, struggles with that um, on a daily basis. We also um, have libraries and resource centers in our civic initiative um, offices, which are at the district level. And I was just out there a couple of weeks ago, and what we find is we have teachers from the villages coming into the district to use our resource center and learn about voter stuff. We also have audiovisual there or internet, and they take that back out to their students. The impact. Um, of the, the civic initiative centers. Um, monitoring assessment of, of these activities have demonstrated that their impacts include enhanced awareness and understanding of, of Nepali people on the electoral system and the election process and, and their role as voters. And it has also increased confidence um, of the people in democratic electoral processes. That is an understanding the power of voting, particularly among marginalized groups. To conclude, um, I just want to make a few remarks and observations, um, sum summarize basically, that in the area of informal voter education, International IDEA supports the Election Commission of Nepal to deliver bridge, bridge trainings, to minimize the invalid votes and maximize voter turnouts, and to strengthen and upgrade the managerial capacity of the electoral management body itself. International IDEA also uses its civic initiative centers to provide civic education at the local level to increase voter confidence, citizen participation in elections, and inform democratic decisions. 
as demonstrated by the lack of voter understanding of a proposed new electoral system in the Canadian province of Ontario, I just want to say, I think it's pretty clear, voter confidence is key to moving democratic transitions forward. Nepal so far has been successful in creating a high level of voter confidence, which is, I believe, the result of extensive and effective voter education. International IDEA hopes to continue to support the, the Election Commission Nepal and other government and non-government actors to provide voter education in the years ahead. And of course, I am looking uh, forward to electoral reform in Canada and a very robust um, uh, voter education program. Thank you very much to the organizers and uh, to you for your time and attention.